In the LIS 340 visits to the University of Wisconsin-Madison Special Collections, every student exhibited the same behavioral pattern. They spent the entirety of the first visit very timid and hesitant to touch the books. At the second visit, they were unafraid to dive into their books and confidently handled them. More conversations and critical thinking ensued. This group behavior showed that more time students spent personally interacting with archaic books led them to have higher comfort levels when handling them. This comfort allows for deeper user experiences, but it takes time to break this touch barrier. We have been conditioned to never touch historical facts and to believe that their handling is only allowed by gloved experts. However, not handling the books inhibits engagement with them and prevents the uncovering of their ancient mysteries. There is a proper way to interact with them, though. These books must be handled delicately, deliberately, and with care. Oftentimes, the cover will be robust enough to turn around in your hands, but the pages should only be touched at their edges and corners, or else the oils of our hands will deteriorate the pages, sizing and ink. After passing the touch barrier, you will be free to think about the technical aspects of the book. Empirically observe what you are looking at. What material is the cover? Has the text block been rebound? Are you able to see the stitch supports which tie together the choirs? How is the text block attached to the cover? What are the pages made of? Paper, parchment, papyrus, or bamboo? Is the book miraculously preserved or is it deteriorating? Has it been well loved and worn with many margin notes and rubrications? Printed or scribed by multiple hands? What is the typeface of the font used? How many hands could have gone into producing this one book? Of the many questions to prompt us what to look at in front of us, don't forget to observe what is not there. Throughout this process, you may begin to ponder the subjective, analyze the book's content, and think about its historical context. What era is it from? Before, after, or during the print revolution? If the book was designed modestly or lavishly, what social class or demographic was it intended for? Can you tell what language it is written in? Are there illustrations? How are they produced? Can you discern what the book is about? These thoughts are what led historians into deep primary source textual analyses. But if you are hesitant to open one of these texts in the first place, you will never achieve the full historian's experience of discovering the past through artifacts. Do not waste time being fearful and handling these books. You will only rob yourself of the experience.